чтобы, ну, хотя бы немножко было у нас негатива на этой сессии, да, может быть, вы расскажете нам, господин Пинейру, как а, будет восстанавливаться туристическая отрасль, да и все остальные в а, Португалии? I would like to say that globalization, well, you know, the Portuguese sailors in the 16th century, they started the pioneering, the globalization first phenomenon. Uh, and I do think that globalization is here to stay. Um, even before the pandemics, the main challenge of international organizations, as IMF, OECD, World Bank, were related to shaping the globalization, to reduce the inequalities and the imbalances that globalization also brought, besides the positive changes by millions and hundreds of millions of people that benefited from the globalization. So, but globalization also brought inequalities. And so what I believe that the pandemics, is, by the way, is a global challenge, by the way, it's, it's not a local, it has some local responses, but the main response to the pandemics it's a global one. There's nothing of that has to do with the investigation, that the research and technologies are all global processes. Even testing of a scene, you need a global process. So I think what we'll probably will see in this discussion about globalization versus localization is that you will have a different globalization and a different localization. Uh, the digital transition is a global process. You cannot, in a single country, can do the global transition. The transition to digital world is a global one. The technologies, the several different technologies, artificial intelligence, it's going to be a global process. Um, but yes, we, I think all these, these challenges need more global responses, as we did in Europe, the European Union. Uh, for the first time, EU uh, had uh, this very strong and solidarity response for Portugal was fundamental that we get the recovery fund and the, the budget, the multi-year budget fund, we, Portugal will have a, a massive bazooka of support for um, responding to the social crisis. Yes, there is this negative dimension. Human beings are being affected tremendously in the pandemics and the after pandemics. But we got this a uh, massive response. In Portugal, we will benefit around 45 billion euros uh, from uh, non-refundable uh, uh, funds to use until 2026. And also, we'll have uh, 10 billion euros extra more with, uh, with the loans. So we have to, to tackle first and foremost the social crisis. How many companies will disappear? Micro, small, mid-sized. We don't know. We probably will see that in the end of the year, perhaps in the, in the first quarter of 21. Right now, I don't think there is firm scientific evidence that will say how many will survive. What we know for sure is that we have to respond swiftly and strongly to support um, the, the families and to support companies. And this is our, our great challenge. The our great ch challenge is to use these times as an opportunity, an opportunity to address structural problems in our economy and social problems in our economy. This is a big shock. Um, there is a what economists call the destructive process to co creation. We didn't see any bigger destructive process than the pandemics. So we have to build on the positives of the pandemics, including better air. We, for the first time in Portugal, we see the dolphins again in the River Tage in Lisbon. Many animals are returning to the to the to the to the mountains. So yes, we can see a better better uh, better air. So can we build on this? So our main challenges will be the qualification of the Portuguese working force. It's a huge challenge. We have to speed up. I think the globalization, the, 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 the pandemics is a challenge to speed up the globalization trends in a certain way. 
Um, and so we start with the working force, with the people. People first, persons first. Capitalize our companies. It's an old problem. How to capitalize? How they, to become them competitive? Not to destroy global value chain, uh, chains. That will not be destroyed. They will be changed, for sure, in the strategic areas, in the health. That was became very evident that we needed a different type of response, also global response. Second is the, the guaranteed regular source to the income for families, disposable income for families. It's vital in order to, if you don't, if you have an economic crisis, you don't need a social crisis. Also to increase our productivity. It's now the time to do it. It's not later on. It's now that we have this bazooka financing. Speed up our justice system, I think. It's one of the fundamental competitive factor is the justice. The justice systems play a fundamental role. And then to diversify our energy supply sources. On tourism, yes, it's one of, one of our largest economic activity. Uh, for instance, in Portugal, the official data in 2019 is that uh, it was responsible for more than 50% of the exports of services. 50% of the export of services. And, uh, and accounts for almost 20% of the total exports. The tourist revenues, only tourist revenues, Portugal, contribute to almost 8.7, almost 9% of GDP. So this is a big challenge because tourism is most bigly affected, was usually affected by the pandemics. What are we going to do? Well, first, to a survive kit, survival kit for the best companies and services. And this is what we are doing. In the, in the fiscal system, in the tax system, a lot of moratoriums, a lot of um, exceptional uh, recovery uh, plans to, to, to value the, the companies and tourism. The local tourism, the micro companies, the small size companies, and uh, yeah. as, uh, as Pascal Interchan was mentioning, it's fundamental to speed up and support the SMEs in this area. So um, uh, the clean and safe stamp, we are moving that very strongly to have clean and safe stamp for the time being. And of course, all the campaigns in national. We do believe that, you know, pandemic's not gonna stay forever. So, but we can use this time to really change our economies and our societies, not only the economies, to accelerate the digital transition, the climate transition, um, and, uh, and of course the, the energy transition. We, in the EU, you have this biggest partner, Russia, is moving to a green agenda fast and furious, if I can say that so. And we need Russia also to be part, active part in this process because it's going to be the future of our lives and our <laughs> descendants, our sons and our daughters and, uh, and, uh, and our grandsons. So I do believe that Russia and Europe will work ever more close together in, this, in these big challenges. They are global, need some local responses, but these are low. The balance between localization and globalization now is key for a better world. Thank you.